side there are uh, there's a list of websites that you can go to, not just to Clifford Carnicons, but this is the most, uh, his website is the most well-documented one with lots of medical information. I've talked to over a hundred doctors just in this past six months, naturopaths, MDs, uh, all sorts of people in healthcare, and there we have staggering rates of upper respiratory and cardiovascular problems that we never used to have. There's a brand new emerging field and that's called environmental cardiology uh, and they're not even dealing with the issues of uh, weather modifications and chemtrails. I'd like to know how are the real drought conditions by nature exacerbated by a constant spew of aerosols in the chemtrails? How much of global warming or climate change is actually caused by billions of tons of these aerosols that have been sprayed over us for the last eight years without our permission? It's not just CO2 emissions that we have to deal with, but we have to deal with weather modification. How is weather modification by the military destabilizing our planet's natural, plant, uh, natural weather? A controversial weather modification bill was just, pla just passed, Bush just signed it to, to the 109th uh, Congress. There was no public discussion. These bills did not include any agricultural, water, EPA, or public representatives, and did not have any provisions for congressional, state, county, or public oversight of either expenditures, medical, and or environmental consequences. In other words, we've really been guinea pigs for at least the last eight years with literally every breath we take. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. What we are breathing now, as one of my dear friends says, the indoor air is just the same. What the indoor air is, is just the outdoor air inside. And we're fighting these temperatures. We're trying to get our garden growing. It's the end of April. Very unusual for us not to have our garden going really strong. The temperatures are fluctuating a lot. I've been trying to share with you guys the information that I'm finding out about it. Um, I'm going to share some more information with you guys right now uh, from a doctor who's spent a lot of time studying this. If you watched the last video we did about this stuff, uh, you can see her talking about it. I left a link for the video that I referenced. If you go back and check that link, the video has been removed. Okay, y'all? I don't know what to tell you about it, but we've noticed a lot of differences in our gardens over the last couple years. And uh, I want you to enjoy this video clip real quick here. I'm gonna put these nails down. I'll show you what I'm doing. We moved all the rock in our walkways and now we're putting down the fabric. And you use some uh, barn nails with a quarter inch washer on there. That keeps it from poking through the fabric all by itself. So it'll stay on top of the fabric. And then that'll help hold the fabric down everywhere. But I want you to enjoy this video clip right here and I'll see you in a second. Dr. Ilya Perlingeri. Perlingeri is the author of The Uterine Crisis, one of the first books to link environmental toxins with the staggering rate of women's reproductive illnesses. What I'd like to focus on today in my talk is how weather modification, which was mentioned just briefly in a question, uh, is playing a major role uh, in this rapidity of environmental changes, but also in the vast increases of illness. So let me set the stage with some background. Uh, I spent 15 years of independent research for my last book, which is called The Uterine Crisis. It is uh, one of the first books to link environmental, the huge environmental crises that we have, multi-layered that they are, with women's reproductive problems. And they are staggering from, uh, it, from fetuses in utero all the way to elder women. Uh, and uh, though I haven't done the research uh, for you guys, you're not off uh, the hook by any means because sperm count is down by 50%. It's because sperm count is down by 50% with all the toxins in the environment. But what I learned with uh, this research is, and it's a staggering figure, if you can even get your mind around it, is that we are exposed on a regular basis to 100,000 chemicals every single day. It depends on the spew where you are, and I do mean a spew because it's a toxic spew. Uh, 
And most of these, most of these have never been tested for human safety. We're the guinea pigs for uh, a, an experiment that is way out of control. And this is one of the reasons that we have high rates of cancer, although right now cancer is number two, superseded by uh, heart cardiovascular problems, which is now number one, and asthma, which I will mention later, is number three. In addition, there are 8,000 new chemicals that go online every year to which we're all so exposed. 8,000. These two have never been tested for human safety. Chemicals and pharmaceuticals are tested one at a time, and because the way things are right now, there are very few independent labs and few independent scientists. So a lot of this is, uh, as I say, the fox is uh, guarding uh, a scenario that's really pretty awful. And we have known really since the 30s, particularly for issues surrounding women's reproductive problems, that tampons were unsafe in the 30s, but a lot of things are covered up, and that has not changed in 70 years. So having uh, the pharmaceutical companies test things or the chemical companies test things doesn't necessarily mean that we're safe if something's put online. Uh, in, additional, in addition, uh, these uh, safety factors that the chemical and the pharmaceutical companies uh, test for, it doesn't real, they're testing one chemical at a time. This does not address what Dr. Theo Colburn in our Stolen Future in 1996 addressed, and that is it's multiple. And one chemical plus one chemical does not equal two. One chemical plus one chemical could equal, especially in hormone-disrupting chemicals, 1,600 times the dose. And we're all walking time bombs. That is a reality. Everybody in this room. Bill Moyers did a great, great show about six years ago called Trade Secrets, uh, which is still available, I believe, on DVD, looking at this whole issue of uh, the multiplicity of chemicals and the problems that uh, the problems, I should say, of greed uh, have caused for Americans. And as I write in The Uterine Crisis, it's all about greed. It's not about our well-being and safety. And there are countless stories about the problems of people who have become critically ill or died, stories going back to the thalidomide crisis in the 60s and 70s, toxic shock syndrome, pesticide poisonings, which are really off the scale, even for small children, and Vioxx, just to name a few. It was on the market when they knew it was unsafe and people were spending a fortune so that the companies could make billions of dollars. We are the guinea pigs in a huge and complex experiment where the health and environmental repercussions are absolutely staggering. Babies are now born with what is called the body burden. That is, while they're growing in utero in their mom's bodies, they are already getting a chemical body burden that is passed on through the umbilical cord. And so by birth, these poor, innocent children are already affected. And there are staggering rates of birth deformities, cancers and other reproductive related illnesses that we did not have 20 or 30 years ago. When I was growing up, there was no such a thing as a children's hospital. Think about it. We have children's hospitals all over. What has happened? What has happened? Just think about that figure. What does 100,000 chemicals mean in a mixture that is not even being tested in its vast mathematical complicity? We breathe chemicals every day. We eat food grown in heavily pesticided soil, soil that's greatly reduced in beneficial organisms and mineral content from 30 and 40 years ago. We drink water that is highly contaminated with other chemicals, including mercury, as Pat mentioned, and every other kind of spew that you can even imagine. Americans are exposed to many higher levels of toxins, including mercury, from power plant emissions, as Pat had mentioned, from cement factories, and from multi-prepared vaccinations, the latter of which has uh, resulted in autism, high rates of autism, ADD, and other cognitive func uh, fun troubles. 
For centuries, we've known that mercury, probably thousands of years, that mercury is deadly. There is no safe level of mercury, not at all. The Mad Hatter of Alice in Wonderland is based on the 17th and 18th century real Mad Hatters who died and went crazy before they did because of the use of mercury in making those tall hats that we see in uh, historical uh, paintings. There's no safe level, as I mentioned, of mercury. It takes decades to work. It's deadly action. And in a person's later years, brain function and cognition deteriorate and death ensues. I've seen it with my own mother, who was one of the leading dentists in the United States for 47 years. I've seen it with friends. And it's a pretty awful scenario to see somebody who was brilliant not even be able to communicate. Mercury is unsafe and we are breathing it as we speak. Thirdly, in regard to climate change, there has been new research from several scientists just in this past year showing dwindling to no sunspot activity from our sun. The science is not perfect. We've heard from uh, people earlier today saying it's a consensus and there's, everything's always up for re-examination. Uh, but there, this lack of sunspot activity could indicate uh, from several scientists, if you need the websites and the uh, particular references, I'll be glad to give them to you after my talk. Uh, this might be indicating that we're entering what is known as a maunder minimum that is similar to the ice age that was mentioned earlier during the 17th century. This may indicate that, in fact, maybe the climate is not getting warmer, but much cooler. We just don't know. This is all up for changes. I will say, living in Maine and having just moved from California, and that's another story, uh, Maine this past winter had 16 feet of snow. It's the highest, uh, most significant snow level that we've had since records uh, began uh, to be kept during the 1870s. Of April this year, there are more than 150 different weather modification programs around. In addition, the Pentagon is on record this summer as saying it wants to resume open air testing of biologic weapons. There's a flyer outside on this with some research that Professor Francis Boyle has done. And he's been quoted recently as saying, the Pentagon is fully prepared to launch biological warfare by means of anthrax. All the equipment has been acquired and all the training conducted and most combat ready members of the U.S. Armed Forces has been given protective equipment and vaccine. Do you know that as of October 1st, how many of you know that we are on an anthrax alert that was issued by the, the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services? Anybody know? One person, two people, three people. I think we have to move along to lunch here. So I would like to say that we don't have Star Trek technology. It's just a Hollywood fantasy. Yet much of this technology is being used on us without our permission. We are signatories to no germ warfare and to the Nuremberg trials. This is our home. This is our home. Earth is our home. We don't have Star Trek technology to go to another planet. We have consequences that are moral and ethical in their ramifications, and we don't need to have any more toxins. Our planet will survive, but we will not with these staggering rates of health issues. And I ask you, do we want to live on a planet that is a sewer? Think about it. Thank you very much. Real quick before you guys get out of here, one thing I want to do is offer you a solution. Stacy and I have purchased a high tunnel and we're going to try to grow more of our food indoors. Uh, so we're going to be putting this together in some videos coming up. We'll show you guys step by step how it goes and then we'll show you all year long how it goes for growing food in there. Okay, so that's one way that you guys might be able to combat what's going on in our skies. All right, I just like to offer you some solutions.